Good afternoon. I'm Mike Sikorsky, Salary Estimation Supervisor, Macomb County Society Olympia. Welcome. Nothing's changed from last year, that's the good news. Nothing, nothing to upset the apple cart. So I'm just going to go through each section and kind of give you an overview. How many of you are new coaches to Salary Estimation? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to go through each of the there's three different stations and kind of give you some hints and some helpful information that would help you to practice with your students. And that might be the best way to about this. And if you have questions afterwards, I'll take those questions. On station number one, where we have a bucket, we'll have some dry substance in it. Could be nuts and bolts, could be pennies, paper clips. So heavy things are a possibility. Uh, there probably will not be, because I did it one year and it was extremely messy. Cornmeal, it says on here cornmeal. I'll do cornmeal again because it was, it was vacuuming up at the Macomb uh, South Campus for a long time when that was, it was everywhere. It was closed. So messy things like cornmeal are probably not going to be used. But you can practice that just so they get an idea of how to work with something that's very light. A larger amount is needed in the cup. Heavy things, of course, are going to take up less space in the cup. And the cup is not going to be a small cup just because I'm using nuts and bolts. The cup might be large just to throw them off a little bit. No thinking about it. The cup has to be half full. I had that happen a few times. When I did nuts and bolts, it was like four and a half nuts and bolts. And we had people throw the cup up three quarters away, it was a kilo and a half instead of 100 grams. So they just didn't practice very much about what 100 grams actually feels like. <clears throat> you might want to do that with your students. Give them uh, a Ziploc bag of M&Ms that has 100 grams in it, uh, a Ziploc bag with 100 grams of pennies, or 100 grams of dimes, or nickels, or quarters. And have them carry that around. And if once in a while, they just pull it out and carry it. Feel, see how it feels. The same thing might be true of 100 grams of popcorn. It's going to be a much larger amount. And that you may not carry around in your pocket, but you may have to practice that when you to get together with them. And they're going to feel what 100 grams of popcorn feels like. And that would have to be a, a bowl, not a, not a cup. But anything is use, anything could be used for the, not just a cup, but most often it's going to be a solo cup, probably in the uh, 12 to 24 ounce range, one of those kind of cups. They're very uh, sturdy, they last a long time. You can write on them with a magic marker very easily. That's why I'm probably going to be using that kind of cup most of the time. Once in a while, I could use a heavy cup. It could be a ceramic cup even. So practice that once in a while. So you're putting 100 grams of whatever into a heavy cup. And they got to measure, feel it, what the cup feels like, and what, what the cup feels like with 100 grams more in it. Probably not going to do that because it's hard to carry in 80 ceramic cups into a, a competition. Very, very heavy. I, I already have quite a bit of two boxes as it is. And to carry 80 ceramic cups would be difficult. But it's a good experience in case someone at the district tournament has to be change things up a little bit. Sure. Um, is it always uh, grams and always solids, or is it liquids potentially? It's a dry substance. Dry substance. I won't be using water. Mm -hmm. It's too hard to do that. It's too messy. I have a question. Not a silly question, but the popcorn is it popped or the kernels? Both. Both. Could be the way. Okay. And if it's not popped, it's going to be smaller. No, that was just box. It's going to be quite a bit before you get 100 grams. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If I had to use that, I'm giving using a kind of, not a cup, but a bowl. Good. Scoop right. up whatever's uh, pop popcorn. <laughs> now again, it could be messy and all you know, things. So styrofoam. I can practice, practice with styrofoam. This, the the stack of electricity alone was insane. Didn't mm -hmm. work with it, so no, I'm not gonna work with that either. Not even heavy styrofoam, which is station number two is the students estimate number of objects in three different containers holding from 100 to 5,000 pennies: beans, golf balls, rice. Anything like that. Now, rice obviously be a small container, and you can't go over 5,000, and rice is very tiny, so it could be done. The best way to teach your students to do this is to count the surface area, you try to count the top layer, so to speak, and then they go on the side. Doesn't matter what side, but they look at the side and go, "How many layers do I think I see of what I just counted?" So, if we have a, a, a container of beans, they count what they think is what one layer is on the top layer, so to speak. And they say, "How many did I count on that top layer?" Now, how many layers do I think I see here? Seven, eight, nine, it might be multiply. There'll be calculators at, all, at both these stations. No calculator at station number one, but there are calculators at station two and station three. So they can just multiply. I, I counted 85 across the top. I see seven layers, seven times 85, that's my number. And you can have the other student, and you might find that one student is really good at station number one or station two or, or station three, and the other student, not so good. You should have them work together sometimes and see what result you get. If it was better when they work together, Get like a, I get this number, you get that number, we put it together, divide by two, and our result's pretty good. We're always about 85, 90 percent. 
or is it uh, student number one it seems to always get the, uh, the 100 grams a lot better than student number two. Maybe that person is the captain, so it's the on station one. It overrides student number two on station one. Okay, the same thing happening on station two. So student one or student two work, to work, to work really well together and you get a good result from them combining their score they do and then divide it by two or is it stage this this time student number two is the person who does better on station two so you want to have that person be the captain so to speak and override stage student number one on station two and then for station three on the whole situation mm -hmm. again repeating that same situation with it either they work together and they do really well or one is better than the other on one of the three different uh, stations and you have to find out what that might be it could be, it could be either or or it could be both together So you said the container will have many substances in it, and you got to find the surface area of each layer, or is it the entire surface? The stuff, stuff that's inside the container will be all the same, Okay. but you have to count the top, what you believe is the top surface, one, one layer, so to speak. Okay. And then you say, well, I think I was, I, my, my layer was about a half an inch thick or so, or a quarter inch thick. How many of those do I think I see from the top to the bottom and multiply? Okay, got it. Yeah. What kind of container is it? And there's no limit on the container. Okay, so it, it could be a round container. It'll be a clear container, though. Uh, this will be able to be seen at least on two sides. Most of the time, I always have a, like cellophane across the top, so that you can see on top. You have to really count the surface, and if you can't see on top, how can you count the surface? So you got to have the open, top has to be open at least one side. Because if they have at least that, then they've got a way to be able to figure it out. Yes. How much time do they have at each station? There's a half an hour for the whole event. Half hour. So you know, and the first one, if they're practicing what 100 grams is, it takes a minute. Okay. But they have about five minutes there to eat it, to pull some out, pick it up, put their hands, put it inside, put it back in the bucket, <coughs> they can do whatever they want with that. And they take, share it back and forth, and then, yeah, I think that's the right amount. And they hand it to us. We put it behind a partition so it can't be seen by the team, so they can't copy someone else's information. So can I just clarify? So number one, they have to they have to pull out 100 grams substance. Right, yeah. not, so counting, not counting the, the weight of the cup. Okay. Right. That might be 8 grams, that'd be 16 grams. If it's a 32 ounce cup, it's a huge, huge one. I think it's like 35, 35, 36, 37 grams. Mm -hmm. So they have to be able to know the substance inside the cup is 100 grams of that substance, not the, the cup, not the cup. Minus the weight of the cup, right. So uh, you, you said the container is usually square or rectangular. Rectangular. Can it be a round one? It could be. It doesn't really matter because you, you're going to count the surface area and you're going to say, okay, how many do I see? Now I think about the two pieces that I'm not, if it was a rectangle, what would it be? And remove some. But you, a, round, a round bowl it could be possible, but I most often use a rectangular container. Yeah. Okay. But you should practice the round, round bowl once in a while, just see how close they are. Obviously, everyone will be off on the round bowl. It's the same for everybody. So whatever I use doesn't really matter. People, it's more difficult, yeah. but every reason I have the same standard deviation, so to speak, if they're really good at it, they're going to still be close. And if they're not very good at it, the round bowl will make them a little more, a little bit more off, but so everybody, everybody else will be more off, too. So. Yes? What did you say was the, like the, limit, the right limit for the substance? Weight limit? For I didn't. Five, three to 500 units, right? Uh, 100 to 5,000 pennies, or whatever the object is. Yeah, 100 to 5,000. And generally, I do have, there's three containers there. So I usually have one container that ranges in the 100 to 1,000 range, approximately, give or take a few hundred. There's another one container that has anywhere from a thousand to two, two and a half thousand, and then one more container that's going to be more difficult because it's going to have three to four to five thousand, something in the higher range. I try to make it uh, somewhere that there's like a small, medium, large, so to speak. Not necessarily the size, but the number of objects. And I could have a small container with rice in it, and that'll be the one that is the four thousand two hundred fifty because rice is very tiny. Yes. So for that station two, there's three three containers. Okay. Yeah. Then station three, students are estimating the volume of three different boxes between 100 and 1,000 cubic centimeters. If you have a cube of 10 by 10 by 10, that is 1,000 cubic centimeters. <coughs> I'm sorry, did you repeat that? Did you start over? Uh, just on a rule, just a rule sheet. Okay. Did we get a copy of that? Uh, it's on, on, <coughs> online. Oh, just make a copy of it. Uh, website. You use Google Science Olympiad, pop right up elementary, and then go to events. That's the estimation. And you can find okay. Students will estimate the volume of three different boxes between 100 and 1,000 cubic centimeters. And you know, obviously, the skinny boxes with a little tiny edge can be a lot larger, like a box of colored pencils. It'd be different to practice because one edge is going to be very tiny, somewhere in the 
one to two centimeter range, that's more difficult. Because if you're off on that one, you're going to be off quite a bit. Uh, a cube, of course, you can, you can, they're up. If they say nine by nine by nine, they're not off by very far on the uh, 1,000 cubic centimeters. That's not, we don't use cubes very often. So skinny boxes like pencil boxes, tape boxes, uh, things that are more rectangular in shape, but have one side that's a little smaller, or the ones that practice a lot with, because those are more difficult. The boxes are more like, uh, boxes, staple boxes are a little, a, little more, a little easier to work with because at least two of the measurements are pretty close to the same and the other one is slightly longer one. Now obviously we can't go past, if you have 15 by 15 by 15 cube, it can't be used in our competition. So don't work with boxes, don't work with a Kleenex box, it's too big. You can't work with things smaller than that. You should be able to take, you can take your ruler, they can't take a ruler, but you can take a ruler and make sure you're working with the right material so you don't go too large. Then on the scoring situation, I'll open up for questions on all three, all, all three uh, stations still if you have questions on those. But the scoring is a little tricky, especially if the students estimate higher than the actual number. So you have to read that information on the, on the website here or the, the rule sheet. Estimate lower is pretty easy. If they've estimated 3,500 and the actual number is 4,000, you divide 3,500 by 4,000 and you get 0.875 multiplied by 100, you get 87 and a half points. And that's a pretty good score. Anything in the 90% range, although you were going up, first place teams last year averaged about 92, 93% across, on an average across the board. So it's, it's getting more competitive as we keep working on this uh, year by year. So it's better to underestimate than uh, No, it's the same thing. So for example, if you estimated 5,000 instead of 4,000, which is required, you would divide 5,000 by 4,000, you'd get 1.25, you subtract two to get the absolute value. And you subtract, take the negative side disappears, and you get 0.75 times the and you get 75 points. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's like equal. So if you score, this a score for, a, for example, something's supposed to be 100, and you say it's 80, and the other team says it's 120, that's an identical score. You're right. looking at 80%. Okay. That's 80 points. So you're off by 20 either way, you still get the same score. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, if you go under, you still get some kind of score. But if you go more than double what it actually is, mm -hmm. if you were supposed to be 100 and you said 200, your score is what? Zero. zero. Anything double, more than double, or double or more, is going to be zero. Yeah. So, but if you score, you said 10, and it was 100, you're going to get 10%. You're going to get 10 points. You get something. So I guess sometimes, or at least in some way, uh, underestimating a little bit is better than overestimating. If you overestimate, a lot. Right, right. And if you get one, it's supposed to be 100, you're going to get one point. And if you have 201, you're going to get zero. Now, but for questions on any three of the stations. Yes? Are they allowed to like pre measure their fingers ahead of time and then use their fingers as the ruler? Yes, they can as long as they're not using magic marker or pen or pencil to actually make lines on their fingers. So the actual demarcations of wrinkles is fine. But we have had students who come in with magic marker here and there, and they know that's two and a half centimeters, and they're using that to measure, and that's not the purpose of this event, but the estimation. Not something you know is what it is. Same thing with shoe. Some complaint on the website. Uh, I told them to use they could get a calculator to use to solve the problems. And they said we. They, I told the kids that it was seven and a half centimeters across the top of the calculator, and they were allowed to use the calculator to measure. <laughs> but I said, well, no, they weren't. That's cheating. That's using the, the calculator which you pre-measured at seven and a half, whatever it is, and then taking that and using that. That's, that's, that's like a ruler. And we're trying to use estimation here. So no, you can't use the calculator other than to calculate. You can't use it to actually measure things. And your pencil as well. Pencils, don't bring any pencils into this event. I provide all the pencils, I provide all the calculators. Don't bring a calculator in, no pencils. This way there's nobody with teeth marks that are marked at four and a half centimeters or whatever the case might be. Or marks on, we've had that happen. And that happen. Disqualification is not pretty. Oh, is yes. there something that they're not supposed to touch last year? Is there an event, one of the stations that um, not They to cannot touch? turn the station number two, the, uh, the containers. They can't pick them up. Okay, because one of our teams, I think, got disqualified. No, 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 no. I'm not just disqualified a team ever. Yeah. Okay, maybe something. Uh, I've told them, do not pick up the containers. I might disqualify you. <laughs> because uh, one year, the first year, we had someone pick up the container and turn it upside down. And you know what happened. <laughs> All the pasta went everywhere. So, yeah, we didn't want to have that. So that's why we have them not pick it up. It also changes the, if I have pasta in there and then someone picks it up, then it changes on one side, it rolls over. Now I've got one side that's skinny, one side that's tall, and that's not fair to the teams that come afterwards. Right. So that's why we tell them not to touch the, you may touch the plastic, 
you may take your pencil and you know, use the eraser side, not the point side, so you know, poke holes in the cellophane. But yes, you're allowed to touch the containers. Maybe you shuffle it a tiny little bit if you need to see something. They can walk around it, though, so you really shouldn't have to do that. But to pick it up is just causing stuff to shift, and then it's not the same part of the top. Last year, you know, at the end when your coach is allowed to go in and view all that the kids have looked through, um, I felt like the station two, um, they had lids on them that were actually distorted. So they were like the stackable kind of lids, and they had like a circle on top. And so I felt like it was kind of hard to read. Is it okay for the children to ask to have that lid removed when they're looking at it? <clears throat> now, did they put the lid on afterward? I don't know. I just thought they would have left I it didn't all there have as it. I had cell phone. Wasn't your, it was the district tournament. It was the district tournament. Yeah, I didn't, I had cell phone. But is it okay for the kids to say, it's hard for me to see it? Can you just pull the lid off? I don't know. I did, did, did. I'm going to be doing all district tournaments this year. Oh. Uh, in the past, it's been someone else. Uh, and do you always, you always put cell phone? I put cell phone. Yeah. I, I think I remember that, but I think it was the district one that Probably I thought. Probably was, yeah. I have not used any of the lid on it. If I do, it would have to be have to be see through enough. That's to what see. I thought. Yeah. And like I said, they might have just put the lids on it just for us as coaches cleaning up. I don't know. Or Perhaps. I, I have rubber bands on it on the top of the cellophane, so it's pretty tight. So it's pretty easy to see through. I can't imagine. I can't. You have to be able to see through. That was very hard to see. You got to see through. You got to be able to see the surface yeah, for sure. Any other questions? Yes. So as a coach, you are just basically there to supervise. You don't talk to the kids. You don't talk with the kids. They don't ask us questions. You're referring to at the competition? Yeah. No, you can't come in. Oh, we don't even come in. No, no. This is sort of about afterwards. Oh, okay. After all four of the uh, events, four sections of the event are done, we have about 15 minutes with the parents all come in. Oh, just come see what it looks like. <laughs> okay. Before I start putting some away. But no, parents are not allowed, allowed to be inside and work by themselves. Uh, but practice is, of course, the most important thing here. You're going to have to find time to be able to do this. And, and various things. Uh, you do m and you do m and with peanuts in it, they're bigger, in whatever case might be. Use them both for objects and also to be used for the station number one. Yes? Um, for stations two and three, so the first station they hand you, or put I know, in but the... Know, uh, how it work? Just to give you a quick, quick synopsis. Just to, I just want to know when about they walk recording. into the competition, we have uh, four students in front of each bucket, because there's two teams of two. Okay. okay. And then they, they fill out a little piece of paper. It has their names on it, school name, school number. Okay. And then there's a, a cup. They hand them with their team number on it. And then they immediately start digging into the bucket of whatever's in there and give us 100 grams. Okay. okay. They have about five minutes to do that. Okay. They have about 10 minutes or 12 minutes approximately at the next station, station two, and about 10, 12 minutes at the last station. And they just record that on their Yes, there's, answer, there's spots on the answer sheet for the record, except for the first one. Okay. Obviously, we can't really yeah. tell them what they've had in the cup yet until we wait until after he's gone. Items like uh, the M&Ms and macaronis and beans and stuff like that, are they pre-counted and randomly placed inside the dishes, or are they pre-counted and then strategically layered in there? Well, to help you, I'm going to tell you how you can, uh, if you have a scale that's very accurate anyway, how you can, so you're not trying to count 4,250, even you do it once, I've got to do it a number of times. So what we do is you measure 100 of something, okay, and you say this weighs 72.6 grams. Now what you'll do is you'll weigh 100 of those objects four times, and you might get slightly different numbers on those. Divide that, add them up four, the four numbers together, like 72.6, 72.9, 73.1, and seven, maybe an outlier, 71.9. Take those four numbers, add them together, divide by four, you've got approximately about 100 grams, 100 of those things weigh, okay? Now you, now you just pour into the uh, container you're trying to use the heavy kids work with, and you pour in and then you weigh it, and you say, okay, I'm, I'm at, uh, uh, two this is for the uh, station number two, the objects. So I've got 2,200 in there. Okay, now I did multiply 22 times that number. I, I averaged out. That's my number for how many objects are in there. You could be there forever counting if you had to count 4,250. So this is gonna, you're going to be off by like 1% at the most, which is good. It's accurate enough. It's the same for everybody. Multiply off by 1%, up 1% for everybody. So. This will help you quite a bit, and then you have more time to work with them and have them practice because you've got four or five or six containers with objects in them instead of just one. It took you half an hour just to get it ready. <clears throat> any other questions? If you have any other questions, the website is available for you to ask a question, and then it gets back to me, and I answer, and it gets back on the web. <laughs>